Hey guys, it's Mahel here and today I'm going to be bringing you the final part in my master's application series where I'm going to be talking to you about how to choose a university after you've put your applications in. I'm Mahel Khan, I'm a current University of Manchester master's student studying MA Political Science, Governance and Public Policy. I'm a 2-1 graduate from the University of Nottingham in BSc Honours Management and I went through the process that you're about to go through only a year ago. So I'm going to be reflecting on my own experience and how I narrowed down nine different universities to just one to accept and what exactly went through my head as I made this decision. But before we get into the video, if you're new here, if you haven't already, then make sure to click the subscribe button and click the bell to turn all post notifications on so that you don't miss out on a single video as soon as it goes live. Also, if you want access to exclusive perks such as being able to message me directly on platforms such as Instagram or Twitter DM to ask a burning question or to play games with me on platforms such as PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X, PC, etc. Then make sure you become a channel member today. You can do so by clicking the join button below this video and it only costs £4.99 a month. But without further ado, we're going to get straight into the video. So I'm going to provide you with a bit of background on my master's degree applications. I applied for a total of nine universities and every single one of them was a Russell Group University. However, I only got six out of nine offers, meaning that yes, I did get six offers, but I got three rejections. So the ones that I got an offer from were the University of York, the University of Sheffield, the University of Leeds, the University of Bristol, the University of Warwick, and last but not least, the University of Manchester, which I decided to accept. You might already be thinking, Mihal, why would you accept Manchester over, say, Warwick? Warwick is better. Some people do think that Warwick is better than Manchester. But this video is basically going to explain why I made that decision and also how you can make your decision when it comes to the offers that you have and selecting the university that you want to attend for your master's degree. And just to let you know who I got rejected by, the rejections came from the University of Birmingham, the University of Oxford, and last but not least, King's College London. Now, you might be wondering how on earth I got rejected by the University of Birmingham when I got offers from Warwick, Manchester, who are better universities, without a doubt. Well, the tr uh, truth to that is that I applied very early for the University of Birmingham during my very first application. And at the time of application, my transcript was uh, made it look like I was going to get a 2-2 overall. But in fact, I did end up getting a 2-1 overall and so I believe that I was rejected because they didn't think I was going to meet their entry requirements and it was the same with King's College London and with the University of Oxford they wanted a high 2-1, I got a low 2-1 so that was also a fair rejection. So the first way to pick out a university out of your offers is to look at the academic reputation and world rankings of each of them. I recommend personally the QS World Rankings and the Shanghai World Rankings. The reason I recommend World Rankings rather than national ones, for example, from the Complete University Guide, is because you want to be able to future-proof yourself. What do I mean by this? For now, you might be thinking, I'm going to get a graduate job in the UK, and that's that. I'm going to stay working in the UK for the rest of my life, and that's going to be that. But what if things change 10 years down the line? What if an amazing job opportunity comes in America or Singapore or somewhere else that's not in the UK? When they look at your CV, they will still be looking at your university, especially for a master's because some jobs, especially in 10 years time, uh, may require a master's degree at that point in your career. And so when a recruiter is looking at your CV, they need to be able to recognize the university and see that you went to a university with good standing and that you did well there. So two important things. One, get a minimum of a pass at master's level. And two, make it sure that it's from a good university. So I mentioned the Russell Group. There are a few exceptions. Loughborough and Bath being two notable ones. Uh, St Andrews, I can't remember if that's in a Russell Group, but I think that might be another one. But most cases, you are looking at the top of the Russell Group uh, for where you want to attend. By top, I mean the likes of Warwick, Manchester, Oxbridge um, and those kind of universities rather than ones that are towards the bottom like, uh, let's say, Newcastle and Liverpool. So if I remember correctly, the University of Manchester is currently 27th in the world according to the QS World Rankings and 6th in the UK according to the Shanghai Rankings and also in the top 100 in the world for uh, the Shanghai rankings as well. There isn't a big gap between the University of Warwick and the University of Manchester in these rankings, and some people will say that the University of Warwick is better than the University of Manchester. Why did I choose the University of Manchester? We're gonna go into that now with reason number two, the city and the university experience. Now, 
as important as it is to go to a university where you're going to get the most out of your master's degree, after all, you are self-funding this uh, for most part, and you are putting more money into a master's degree than you would at undergraduate level if you're a UK student. For international students, it may be the same, it may be different, but for UK students, when you do a master's degree, you're gonna be paying more, more likely, for example, I'm paying £10,000 in tuition fees versus £9,250 a year at undergraduate level and more of my own money is going into this master's degree. So whilst it is important to go somewhere where you'll get the most out of your university uh, experience, it simply does not mean getting the most on an academic level. You want to be able to enjoy yourself at the same time and I believe that if you go to a university that's quite good, there isn't much difference between uh, let's say for example Manchester and Warwick or let's say Leeds and Birmingham. So at that kind of level this is why I say try and go for a good, as good of a university as possible and make sure you have applied for those top universities in the UK as at that point there isn't too much of a difference. For example yes on graduate uh, earnings University of Warwick students do tend to earn more than University of Manchester students however the difference isn't that big and I believe that I would have had a greater student experience at the University of Manchester than at the University of Warwick and I quite am enjoying my experience at the University of Manchester right now. It's a great city, it's very studenty, and it is somewhat affordable. I mean it is becoming more expensive but for the point of video it is somewhat affordable as well. So not only am I enjoying myself here but I'm also able to afford the day-to-day -day living, which is good. Now, when I say the student experience, I don't mean this from a sesh perspective. You're not gonna pick out a master's degree university purely based on where you can sesh. I don't mean it like that. What I mean by this is you need to be, make sure that you're going to enjoy the course, you're gonna enjoy the modules, you're gonna enjoy the workload, you can manage the workload, and there are things to do in your spare time. The reason for this is because a master's degree is so much more intensive than an undergraduate course. An undergraduate course, you could literally not attend a lecture and when it comes to the end for the assignment, uh, let's say it's 100% coursework, you can look at one or two um, lectures, base your coursework on that and still get a 2-1. It really is as simple as that at undergraduate level. Master's level, not so much. You have continuous assessments, for example today, I had a presentation and I had to deliver a 5-10 minute uh, Q&A in front of the whole class. I was getting asked loads of questions and to be honest, it's quite intensive. Like, whereas I was used to before just doing things right at the end, with a master's, I'm having to do things continuously. And so, because I'm working continuously, I also need to be able to sh make sure that I can re relax continuously with a good balance. And so, when it comes to the relaxing part, or let's say the extracurricular activities, you need to make sure that the university that you go to has a lot on offer. The University of Manchester does have the biggest students union in the country and also I believe the most societies available. I have signed up for a few, I'm starting to get involved in these, for example one is powerlifting, uh, which I do want to get involved in, I do want to attend the next session. But the point is, for example, I don't think that there's as much to do in Coventry or where Warwick is based. Warwick's like slightly outside Coventry, but you would say that Coventry and Leamington Spa are the main areas. Leamington Spa being quite quiet and Coventry obviously being a city quite uh, active, but also a bit dangerous from what I've seen recently. But that's what also came into my mind uh, decision making process. Not only is the university here good, but also the city is good and the things that you can do around your studies. My third tip on how to pick a university for your master's degree is to look at the modules before you accept an offer. What do I mean by this? So every university will have their own course page and on that course page, they should have a list of modules. And under that list of modules, it should also say how it is assessed. For example, at King's College London, if I were to get an offer, I would have had to do exams and I am really anti-exams at university. I'm a coursework guy, I love coursework, uh, don't ask me why, but also presentations are fine, but as long as there's no exams, I'm good. And at the University of Manchester, it literally has been uh, presentations, group work and coursework. There are no exams, I don't have to do a single exam unless it's like an online test, but it's not like I have to sit in an exam hall and write out uh, continuously for like two hours. And that played a big factor in my decision making process. If I remember correctly, 
University of Warwick might have had a few exams and so that was something that made me go, mm, I'm not sure about that. Because ultimately, you need to pick a university course that you know that you're going to do well on as well. And me personally, I do better on coursework than I do uh, with exams. And so by picking a university course and a university where I know that I'm going to have a chance of doing better because of the form of assessment there, I was in a good spot. And so far, everything is looking good. I'm on track to get that pass that I want and I'm happy with my decision. My fourth tip on how to choose a university for your master's degree in the UK is to look at LinkedIn. This is where you might have to do a bit of digging into other profiles. So what do I mean by this? Go on to search on LinkedIn and search the course that you are looking for at the university. So what you can do by this is for example, there'll be someone who may have graduated on that course that you're looking to study from the university that you're looking to study at a few years ago. See what they're doing now. See how they are progressing after doing their master's degree. Do they have a good job? Uh, what is their work experience like? And you can kind of get an idea of where that master's degree has led them to. Has it provided value? Has it given value to uh, their career? Or simply, is it just something that they wasted their money on? For me, I know that the uh, School of Politics at the University of Manchester is quite reputable. Arguably not as reputable as uh, Warwick's Politics Department. Warwick does have quite a uh, reputable Politics Department. But at the end of the day, like I said before, the difference isn't that significant for me to be like, yeah, I need to pick Warwick. I'm not too worse off at the University of Manchester uh, than I would have been if I went to the University of Warwick. Last but not least, my fifth and final tip on how to pick a university is to look at the course costs. Now, this is very important. The reason I say this is because you could say that King's College London is better than the University of Manchester. But, 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 I'm paying £10,000 for my course here at the University of Manchester. If I were to study a similar uh, course at King's College London, then I would have had to pay, I believe it was £16,000. That's a £6,000 difference. I would not have been able to afford it without additional uh, financial help, for example, bursary, etc. And that's also going to be my next point within point five. But although you could maybe argue, yeah, I would have been better off going to King's College than Manchester had I got an offer. At the time where I want to study as a 22 year old, £6,000 is massive. And so I have to tell myself, Mahel, is it worth uh, waiting a few years until I can afford that £6,000 difference and going for the Masters then, at let's say age 25 or 26? Or do I pay £10,000 at the University of Manchester at the age of 22, get the Masters out of the way with and then just go straight working for the rest of my life? And that was the option for me. I wanted to do a Masters straight after my undergraduate degree to get the education side out of the way with. I might go back later on in a few years for a master's in public policy or a master's in business uh, business administration, so an MPP or an MBA. But for now, I want to get a master's out of the way with and then start working before deciding do I go back to education one last time or do I just keep working. And so even when it comes to the University of Warwick, I believe their fees were close to 13 or 14,000 pounds. Whilst I said before that the University of Warwick graduates tend to earn more than those at the University of Manchester, in this moment, paying £3,000 or so less was worth it for me. And I believe that in conjunction with my undergraduate degree from the University of Nottingham, then I, that I will be in a good spot and this will help mitigate the uh, differences in average earnings. Especially considering that the jobs that I'm going to be applying for are going to be largely based on my undergraduate degree, me having achieved a 2-1 in management from the University of Nottingham, rather than the master's degree that I'm currently studying towards, as all the graduate jobs that I've applied for do not require a master's degree, and it will be something that I'm basically future-proofing myself with. But that is going to be it for the video, guys and girls. I hope it has been informative and very helpful. Those are my five tips on how to choose a university to study a master's degree in the UK. These, this is also the last part in this series. If you would like to see a part four, do let me know in the comments with uh, what exactly you'd like me to cover. However, I believe that I have covered everything you need to know about applying for a master's degree in the UK. 
as I went through the process of how to uh, select a university to apply for to begin with, the CV and uh, application process and personal statement, and last but not least, how to also choose a university. But there is, if there is anything that I've missed out in the process that you would like to see, then make sure you let me know in the comments below. Make sure to also follow me on my social media handles, that's at Mel Khan on Snapchat, Instagram, and TikTok, at Mel X on Twitter, and official Mel Khan on Facebook. Also let me know in the comments as well what other videos you'd like to see from me. There is a day in the life vlog coming soon. It will be the next video after this. In fact, I'm in the process of filming a day in the life for TikTok exclusively. So make sure you are following me on there. The University of Manchester uh, official account actually asked me a question on there saying, how's, this, how's the new semester going? So I'm responding to that with a TikTok. So if you're not already following me on there, you need to be following me on TikTok and there will be a full length video coming on YouTube as well as the next video. But if there is anything else that you would like to see from me, do let me know. I've been Mihal talking to you about how to choose a university in the UK to study a master's degree, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.